So now we're ready to discuss the chronic myeloproliferative disorders. Now, these are essentially, again, malignant neoplasms. They are uncontrolled proliferation of certain cell populations, but we don't really group them in the leukemia category because they don't really tend to go into the bloodstream. They, they tend to be issues in the bone marrow. So let's talk about some of them. So now we're ready to discuss the chronic myeloproliferative disorders. Now, there are four of them you should be aware of, and the four of these disorders sort of represent an overlapping spectrum. So some of them have very similar qualities to each other, and sometimes it's actually hard to tell which myeloproliferative disorder you're dealing with. Each of them do have some defining characteristics that you should learn for step one, but just keep in mind that in real life, it's actually pretty hard sometimes to tell the difference between these different disorders. First, we have polycythemia vera, and this is an abnormal clone of the hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow that are trying to produce red blood cells. These erythropoietic stem cells are uncontrollably releasing red blood cells into the circulation. So a large increase in red blood cells, as you can imagine, is going to result in a very large hemoglobin or hematocrit value. And that's usually how this disorder first gets picked up on routine laboratory testing. Then there's essential thrombocytosis, which is basically similar to polycythemia vera, where you have uncontrolled production of platelets. So in polycythemia vera, it was red blood cells, and in essential thrombocytosis, it's megakaryocytes producing too much platelet. Then there's myelofibrosis, which is essentially a fibrotic obliteration of the bone marrow. In this situation, because the entire bone marrow gets replaced by fibrosis, all of the different cell lines in the bone marrow are going to be decreased. You often see a pancytopenia in a patient with true myelofibrosis. Lastly, there's CML, which we already talked about as being chronic myelogenous leukemia. And this is secondary to the bcr able fusion protein or the Philadelphia chromosome. Now, when we talk about these four disorders, we need to compare them in terms of their laboratory values because that's often the way you're going to tell the difference between them. Now, in polycythemia vera, obviously, you're going to have an increase in the red blood cell count or the hemoglobin or hematocrit. Now, interestingly, polycythemia vera also usually results in a leukocytosis and a thrombocytosis, so both an increase in the white blood cell count and the platelet count. So you can see how this can get confusing. Now, we said Philadelphia chromosome is only present in CML, so it's not present in polycythemia vera. However, polycythemia vera is a result of a different mutation called the JAK2 mutation. And the JAK2 protein is involved in hematopoietic growth factor signaling. If you have certain mutations of JAK2, it can result in uncontrolled proliferation of these stem cells. And so in polycythemia vera, it is a mutation in JAK2. In essential thrombocytosis, obviously you're going to see a thrombocytosis or increase in the platelet count. And usually, usually, the red blood cells and the white blood cells are not affected. So you have an isolated thrombocytosis, again, negative for the Philadelphia chromosome, but it is positive for the JAK2 mutation. For myelofibrosis, usually early on in the course of the disease, you can see an increase in the white blood cells and the platelets, and that's more of a reactive phenomenon. But as the disease progresses and the bone marrow really starts to get replaced by fibrosis, you're going to see a drop in all three of the cell lines, and you really will get a pancytopenia. Again, negative for Philadelphia chromosome, but it is positive for the JAK2 mutation in about 30 to 50 percent of cases. That's not all of them, but a good number are JAK2 positive. And lastly, with CML, you obviously will have an increase in the white blood cell count, and that's why we tend to call it a leukemia. You usually will also see an increase in the platelet count, and however, you, you usually get a decrease in the red blood cell count. So CML is kind of the tricky one to remember. It's going to be a decrease in the red blood cells, usually get anemia increase in white blood cells, and an increase in platelets. As we said, CML is Philadelphia chromosome positive, but it's actually JAK2 mutation negative.